Continuing our chapter on periodic function and trigonometry, we're going to talk about radian measure, uh, what radian measure means, um, the relation between radian measure and degrees, because most of what you've talked about in the past has always been in degrees. Um, so radian is just another unit that's used to measure. So our essential question is, what's the correlation between degrees and radians? And our objectives are to convert from degrees to radians and use radian measures for angles. And find the length of an arc of a circle using degrees and using radians. Okay, for our vocab, a central angle of a circle is an angle with a vertex at the center of a circle. That one's pretty straightforward. So, uh, let me draw a picture. Circle, center, angle, central angle. The angle comes from the center. The point of the angle is. The vertex of the angle is the center. An intercepted arc is the portion of the circle with endpoints on the sides of the central angle and the remaining points within the interior of the angle. So an intercepted arc um, is just a portion of a circle. A radian is the measure of a central angle that intercepts an arc with a length equal to the radius of the circle. So a radian is just another way to measure angles. For proportions and conversions, we can use the proportion d degrees over 180 degrees equals r radians over pi radians. Um, so this is where we get that like 30 degrees is pi over, which one is that one, pi over 6? Um, so that's how we get this uh, correlation with, hey, 30 degrees means this in radians because it's using pi for your conversion rate. Uh, to convert degrees to radians, you multiply by pi radians over 180 degrees. And you can, um, that's just your conversion rate. And then to convert radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi radians. So... Multiply by pi divided by 180, multiply by 180 divided by pi. So that's to convert degrees to radians, radians to degrees. All right, so using dimensional analysis, what is the degree measure of an angle of negative 3 pi over 4 radians? So let me rewrite that as this negative 3 pi over 4. So we want to find what the degree measure is. So if we want to find what the degree measure is, what we're going to do is take that 3 pi over 4 radians, and we're going to multiply that by, we want to get rid of radians, so radians goes in the bottom, and we already said it's 180 degrees on the top, and radians is pi. So then um, we take negative 3 pi over 4, we multiply by 180 over pi, just so we can see that radians cancel and degrees are left. Um, so when we multiply across, um, we get um, the pi's to cancel, uh, the 4 reduces to 1, and the 180 degrees reduces to 45 degrees. So then we just have 3 times 45, and 3 times 45 is negative 135. So 3 pi over 4 radians written as degrees is 135 degrees. And since it's negative radians, it's negative degrees. And just remember that negative just um, um, means the way that it rotates around the circle. So it's rotating this way, clockwise. Oops. So what's the radian measure of an angle of 27 degrees? Well, if we have 27 degrees, we want to convert from degrees to radians. So we're going to take 27 degrees, and we're going to multiply by, we want degrees on the bottom, 180 degrees, and then we want pi radians. So we multiply across um, the 27 and the 180. You can reduce, so this is 20, and this one is 3. So you get 3 pi over 20. That's your radian measure. That one's not as pretty, not one that we've learned about specifically yet. Um, well, we learned about 30 degrees, so it's close to 30 degrees, a little bit less than. Okay, I want you to go ahead and try these ones on your own. 
and compare them with your partner. I want you to convert each one of these radians into degrees and degrees into radians. Uh, what are the exact values of cosine pi over 4 radians and sine of pi over 4 radians? Now, if we want to find these, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to um, construct a unit circle. If you have this memorized already, this is going to be very helpful to you. Um, so here we go. So we've got, um, imagine this being perfectly circular circle in a perfectly perfect world where Mrs. Ekblad knows how to draw stuff. Apparently this is not it. I tried. Okay, so this is a unit circle where each one of these points represents a value of 1, um, center on the origin. So if we want to find what pi over 4 is, we need to find out what degree angle that is. So pi over 4, we're going to convert. Um, we want to multiply it by, we want to get rid of pi, multiply by 180. So that cancels. 180 divided by 4 is 45 degrees. So what we're looking at is a 45 degree angle right here. Alright, so in order to find um, the value of sine and cosine, we need to find the value of this point on the unit circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line and make this a right triangle. Because we know this angle is 45 degrees, so that means this angle must also be 45 degrees. So we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Well, the hypotenuse is 1, and we know that in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, hopefully you remember from when we reviewed um, at the beginning of this chapter, um, the sides are um, x and x, and hypotenuse is x squared root of 2. Well, if we know x squared root of 2 equals 1, what does x have to equal? Divide by square root of 2. Um, so 1 over square root of 2. But we don't really like things in that form, so we're going to make this um, into a rational denominator. So I have 2 on the bottom and square root of 2 on the top. So I know that's my value of my x. So that means this side has to be square root of 2 over 2, and this side also has to be square root of 2 over 2. So that means the value of this point here is square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So that means cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, and sine of pi over 4 is also square root of 2 over 2. Remember, cosine is your x value, and sine is your y value of your point on the circle. All right, so that just explains all that stuff. Okay, so what's the exact value of cosine 7 pi over 6 in radians and sine 7 pi over 6 radians? Well, if we did 7 pi over 6, we'll just do this quickly. So 7 pi over 6, we want to convert it into degrees, pi 180, pi's cancel, um, then you reduce... All right, and then we have 7 times 30, and that's 210. So we're looking at 210 degrees. So in the circle, um, there's 90, there's 180, and I need to go an additional how many degrees. So 210 minus 180 <clears throat> is another 30 degrees. So I have to go 30 more degrees here. And this is my 210 degrees. So I need to find the value of this point right here. What is that x and y value? Remember, it's cosine x, sine x. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another right triangle by doing this. I know my hypotenuse is 1. Um, now remember, in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, um, this is, um, that one's 1 for this example, but it's usually um, representing 2x. This is side x, and this is x 
square root of 3 in your 30, 60, 90. So if this equals 2x, that means x has to equal 1 half. So that's my short side here. That's my value of um, my y coordinate, and it's negative, so I know it's negative 1 half. Now I need to find this side here. So if this is 1 half, 1 half times the square root of 3 is square root of 3 over 2. So that's my x value. So that means the cosine of 7 pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. Oops, this should also be negative because it's in the third quadrant, so it should be negative negative. All right, to find the length of an intercepted arc for a circle of r radius with a central angle of measure theta, that represents any measure in radians, the length s of the intercepted arc is r times your radius times theta, the degree of your angle. So, um, use the circle provided, what is the length s to the nearest tenth? So, um, I'm trying to find this missing length at the top. So remember from um, our example, s equals r times theta. So your radius, you can see right here, is 3 inches. So it's 3, and then theta is 5 pi over 6. So we're going to multiply that times, well, we don't want it in... Well, we could do 5, let's just do 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. Okay, this reduces to 1 and that to 2. So go ahead and calculate 5 times pi divided by 2 in your calculator. You should get that's approximately equal to 7.9. And then our units are inches because it says 3 inches right there. So just take the radius times the radian measure of the angle. There we go. All right. Um, I may or may not be a Doctor Who fan. So the TARDIS is waiting um, in a circular orbit around Earth, and it completes one orbit every two hours waiting for the Doctor and Rose to return. How far does it travel in one hour? So, um, we're looking at a two-hour wait, so we're looking at um, this TARDIS spinning above the Earth. It's 2,600 kilometers above the Earth, um, plus we have um, our radius here. So we want to know what our intercepted arc is <clears throat> for one hour. So we have to um, find out how far it is around a circle. So if you remember from our unit circle, when we had this, we said um, 90 degrees is pi over 2, 180 degrees is pi, 270 degrees is 3 pi over 4, and an entire way around the circle is 2 pi. So hopefully you remember that. So we're going to multiply um, uh, we, we're going just one hour, I'm sorry. So it completes one orbit every two hours, so in one hour, how much distance do they cover? So in one hour, they're only covering half the distance. So we're going to do one half times our two pi, our, our radius and um, around. So we multiply those together, we just get a length of pi. Now in order to find our intercepted arc, we use s equals r times theta. So our radius is that 6,400 kilometers. And our theta, um, oh, plus, I forgot to include, let's look at it this way. We also have that distance. It is um, to the TARDIS itself, 2,600 kilometers. And then we're going to multiply both of those times halfway around, which is pi. When you add those two numbers together, you get 9,000 pi. 
and then go ahead and multiply that on your calculator, you get 28,274, and this is in kilometers. So that's how far um, the TARDIS will travel around the Earth in one hour. Pretty interesting. Oh, and there's that. Okay, um, here's another one just like it. I want you to go ahead and also do this one um, and talk to your partner about this first thing. And then your homework is to do Lesson 13.3 and the practice quiz. Um, I'm going to split up this chapter a little bit differently, and we're going to do two practice quizzes because there's a lot of new information, or two quizzes before we do the test at the end after a third section. Hope that made sense. I'll explain more in class tomorrow. Okay, have a great night.